Well, the end of the TNA Ultimate Insiders is now officially upon us. I mean, it's not totally done with. We'll get to that here in a little bit. But the 499 tier is going to rest in peace come the 1st of June. So one of the positives, first of all, about the Ultimate Insiders was that this was ahead of its time. This is one of the things, one of the few things that the company does that was, um, I don't want to call it cutting edge, but no other wrestling company was doing it. No one, no other wrestling company was effectively using this YouTube tier as a way to provide an, an extra means of being able to watch the show to the fans and monetize it a little bit as well. So no one else was doing that. I got a question on my recent mailbag episode saying, should they get rid of the Ultimate Insiders and focus on TNA Plus? And when I was answering this question, I was pointing out that it's very difficult. Um, I, I wouldn't wish this on anybody, you know. It's very difficult to balance a free YouTube channel, a paid membership, and an app, and a paid app. And to create engaging content for all three, that you can you can effectively monetize and and the people are engaged with it and they they use it they utilize it they love it it's very difficult to balance all three they've never had the infrastructure infrastructure in my opinion really to to do one effectively so you're trying to do three so i think many of the fans who have common sense not the faceless twitter trolls um not the the TNA marks, the fans, the TNA fans with with common sense. Look at have looked at this over the years and say it's a lot to try to balance the Ultimate Insiders and TNA Plus. That's a lot. You know, even some of the bigger companies might struggle with this. And what I pointed out about the Ultimate Insiders from the very beginning was that they made an initial press release. Here's the Ultimate Insiders. Here's the package. This is what you get. They have never once on television since then promoted this thing. They've never communicated the value to the viewers. Not one single time. And um, I got into uh, an argument with one of the faceless Twitter trolls. I think it was Barbara Dang who I've name dropped a couple times, whether that's a girl or a guy, I don't know. I'd imagine she's 70 if her name's Barbara, but she said they, they promoted every episode. Like that's fucking Mark talk. They do not promote it every episode. They might name drop it every episode when they say, you know, against all odds is for ultimate insiders. But I've made the joke before that they make it sound like it's a secret society. Tom Hannafin with for the ultimate insiders, shh, there's a secret password in your email if you decipher the code. That's how that shit came across on TV. It was never like something for everybody that everyone can access. They never made it sound that way. When you market something and you put a price point on it, what you have to do is, is communicate the value to justify the price point, and you have to over deliver on that value to where it makes look makes it look like the price point is a steal, like like it's a real deal. And uh, I mean, common sense. You pay ninety nine cents and you get the show. That that's pretty good. But they never really communicated. Well, if you pay four ninety nine, you get this. And what they struggled with was creating additional. Content. So in one of the press releases they pulled that put out, or I think it was the QA, they actually said, you know, we weren't able to, I'm paraphrasing, but we weren't able to to provide the necessary content for this this tier. They had a few things over the years. They had Taylor Wilde's interview, her her podcast. So I li- I used to always listen to Taylor Wilde's podcast before it became on the channel, and I always thought she did a good job. The minute she Put this thing on the freaking YouTube. Her first episode had a had an indie nobody. And then the second episode was Rosemary. And I said, why didn't you make Rosemary episode one and promote that on YouTube? I mean, on uh, social media. They didn't. They, they've never promoted any of these things. And when Taylor Wilde, her podcast changed to YouTube, 
it started sucking. And I mean, there was one time, I don't remember who she was talking to. It was someone I wanted to hear from. And even though I, I don't like Wikipedia interviews, you know, where did you train and who got you into wrestling? And, you know, I don't like those kind of interviews. She was doing, there was one, like I said, that I was watching and 75% of it was talking about freaking Zodiac signs or whatever you call them. And, you know, reading tarot cards and shit. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about this. And there was a lot of episodes that were like that. And then they did Callahan Uncensored. I got through about three minutes of one of those episodes and already decided I don't want to watch that again. And then they had Joe Hendry's Food Fight, which is actually much better, pretty entertaining. He gets it. You know, he knows how to how to uh, conduct an inter interview. The problem is the interview is done either from a cell phone or he is using a HD camera, but it doesn't have an HD card in it. So it, it's just kind of standard definition, and they're using the microphone from the camera, so it sounds bad, and there's echo. And AEW just recently did this, uh, like, match in a movie, I think they call it. It's, a, it's really the same concept, but it's done 10 times better, and it looks better, and it looks like a reality show. And it's not difficult. You can get an HD video camera for 700 bucks and put a HD video card in it and buy a good quality microphone for a couple hundred bucks and that shit will look like a damn movie. Like it is this is not a day and age where you have to buy this in incredible equipment to make something look and sound good. It's just not. So they took that same concept and they and they made it like like I said 10 times better. But the Joe Hendry food fight is not a bad video that that is a a bad interview it is a, a pretty entertaining idea and concept and he does a good job with it but they've never really given us anything any real reason to pay the 4.99 they give you just enough you know like wa watching one tna plus show a month and some food fights like i don't know that's in in for some people that's extra value for 4.99 there's some people who are like i don't want to pay 4.99 for that whatever um but here's where they messed up and this is what really this really actually bothered me how how poor poorly this was done how poorly this was communicated they released a video on youtube to let people know that the ultimate insider is no more this video is maybe 30 seconds long i don't remember exactly it's almost nothing it's santino morella in character saying you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but there'll be no more ultimate insiders. Uh, lots of exciting things coming to TNA Plus. This this video made him look so unserious. It just got the TNA background, and you you've got a com your comedy authority figure on there, your comedy matchmaker, and you're taking this extremely important announcement that's that from a business standpoint very important announcement with money involved here there there is money involved here like you have people unsubscribing from one of your platforms and you're trying to bounce them over to another platform to now subscribe again this is this is like serious shit and you have santino morella Talking about the ultimate insiders will be no more. It will be canceled. Like, are you fucking serious? Like, you could have used Tommy Dreamer. You could have used one of the wrestlers who's a really good speaker. You could have used someone hot like Gail Kim to do it. Or Jay Chung. Like, are you serious right now? And only the TNA marks are going are, are gonna to disagree with me on this. The TNA fans, there's two two categories. The TNA fans are who subscribe to this channel, and the TNA marks. The TNA marks, but okay, go, okay, cool, whatever. It's Santino. It's not that big of a deal. The TNA fans with common sense will look at this and be like, what the fuck is this? Because here's the problem, too. He didn't communicate that the 99 cent tier still exists. If you look at the comments of the video, people are pissed. And people are saying, well, I'm not going to watch TNA anymore because I don't want to subscribe to TNA+. Plus." You don't have to. The problem is they didn't tell you that. 
So then they come up with an additional link that's a Q and A, and all they're doing in Q and A is promoting fucking Impact Plus with their promo code every single question. But they have some legit questions on there, you know. Someone even asks, is this another LOL TNA moment? I can't believe they actually answered that. I've never seen that kind of transparency within a company before. But there, there's a there's the Q&A who, who, that gives further information. It should be supplementary, but now people are forced to seek out this Q&A if they even see it. And then, then there's an additional press release that comes out. This is <laughs> so to clarify the $4.99 tier is going away, and then we're keeping the $0.99 cents here. I mean, what a freaking convoluted mess. And it didn't have to be. The delivery of this was absolutely horrible. And it was unorganized. And I'm going to go back to what I said. He used a comedy character to make the announcement. And he stayed in freaking character. It was a kayfabe fucking announcement. Like, you have, you've, you seriously have got to be kidding me on that. So now you're losing subscribers because now you're going to lose money at this point because there's people who are pissed. Because why? Because people are resistant to change. Even when the change is good, a lot of people are very resistant to change because they're they're set in their ways. I'm set in my ways as far as I watch wrestling on my phone. And because I watch on my phone, I prefer to watch on YouTube. If I'm watching on my television, which is very rare, I do not like to use YouTube to watch stuff. I use, I'll use whatever app. Okay. Viewer habits, viewership habits just change. It just depends on the platform that you're using or not. They they don't change, but viewer viewership habits vary depending on the platform that you're trying to use on my phone. I like YouTube because I can minimize it. Have ADHD very bad. So sometimes I just have to take a break from what I'm watching on there you know, check my email or whatever. I don't like having an app monopolize my phone. Uh, I don't mind watching TV on an app, like I said. But people are very resistant to change, good or bad. So it, you know, because of that, you have to communicate everything in the very, the, the most eyeballs are on that first video. So that's where you have to communicate everything. Not, okay, we're going to clarify with this link and then clarify with a, with another link from there. You know, it, it just very fucking poor execution on this, um, on something that's so serious. Something that's it's like uh, such a big deal for even the, the, the hardcore fans, you know. Just, I was very disappointed with it. Um, I, I want my information right away. I don't want to have to keep looking up more. So it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to take like Food Fight and put it on the free YouTube channel, which I think they should. But now it's going to come off like a knockoff because, number one, it's produced significantly worse than the AEW one. And people already know about the AEW one. Only the Ultimate Insiders, Secret Password, know about Food Fight. Um, and I've made the comment before, the the YouTube is so dominated by the library and dominated by sting and aj styles and all this shit that that's where the the subscriber base is there for the library so they have a very you know quite the uphill battle in changing youtube strategy up not changing it up but just adjusting it to where they can create something engaging for the people watching the product now because that's not what the that's not how the youtube channel is built and there's really no way of saving it at this point, but it doesn't mean you you completely give up. You know, I, I still think they have to find ways to make it more engaging for the current fan base. And you know, Food Fight can help with that. They try to do the Tom Hannafin between the ropes interview, or whatever that sucked, and they got away from that pretty quickly. So maybe interviews is not the way to go all the time. Maybe you should come up with something else. But um, I don't know. I'm hoping that with the added focus on TNA plus that uh, the, the, it's going to improve the app, improve the, the watchability of the app and, and the level of content. I know personally, I'm going to have a hard time watching the, the TNA plus shows because I num number one, I don't really care for a monthly pay-per-view. Like I'm, 
I'm okay with watching the show every week. When you add that extra three hours, that's a little too much wrestling for me, period. And I'm not trying to sound like high and mighty or, well, you guys can watch wrestling, you know, your fucking marks. That's not what I'm getting at. It's just like me personally, it's a lot of wrestling for me. But at least on YouTube, I can minimize it and I can kind of do some other stuff or whatever. I don't think I have that on the app. I, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can minimize the TNA Plus app. I'm I'm going to assume you probably can't. Maybe I'm wrong on that. But I, I envision it taking a lot longer for me to get through these TNA Plus shows now because I don't watch them straight through to begin with. And I feel like now it's going to take me over the course of several days to watch these. And that's that's a little frustrating on my end. But um, they draw they they man they really dropped the ball in the way they they delivered this information and they're going to lose subscribers because of it and that's very unfortunate. But what I'm hoping for is a better TNA Plus app. I'm hoping for a better YouTube channel, the free YouTube channel, because now you've re removed this from the equation. Uh, you know I'm hoping that we just see improvements and um. Santino says there's going to be ex exciting things coming to TNA+. Plus. I'll believe it when I freaking see it.